and your side of your bonnet. The background is uh, I used my period of time that was devoted towards research to study how hydroponics can be used in the comfort of your own home to just grow a sustainable amount of food. And I thought building my own hydroponic system would be cool. So mine is capable of producing six plants at a time. Well, now nine. I just made this one yesterday. And uh, I watched the plants grow, and I documented them in photographs that I can show you guys. And uh, I also demonstrated how others can emulate my project so they can do the same thing in their basement. For probably less than $40, you can have all of this. Maybe, yeah, probably $30. The essential question that guided my uh, whole project was how can I build an ergonomic and low cost hydroponic system in my own home and figure out a way for others to replicate my design in an efficient manner? So uh, I think I answered my question pretty well because I designed something that everyone can do even if you don't have a lot of money or a lot of time because it's not very time consuming. But if you really take the time to learn and research, you can get better at doing it and you won't, uh, you won't face all the struggles that like somebody might see. You can also go get help from the people at Thimble Farm. They were a really big help for Progress, uh, I first started by doing my research in the hydroponics, which I knew nothing about. I took the time, uh, I took four periods, EFGH, I think, or ABCD, and instead of going to like taking a horticulture class, which I'd never done before, uh, I learned how to do that. So I planned and designed my own hydroponic system that we maintained in my basement. Uh, I just have one light that I couldn't bring here today, but I have pictures of it that I can show you guys. Once my materials were shipped, I went out and built my hydroponic system. All I had to order were the Rockwell, I had actually know I got Rockwell plugs, which you start your uh, plants off in the seedling stage. You can kind of see on the bottom, the roots are all coming out of there. but. Uh, I just ordered plant nutrient solution, which is used to treat your plants and help them grow because we just put them in regular water and they don't receive all the natural nutrients that they need to grow. And you'll start finding like deficiencies in nitrogen, phosphorus, um, and oxygen. If you don't have your oxidative, which is this thing, six bucks on Amazon. Yeah. Uh, my plants were grown in Rockwell to begin with and transferred into my system once they were big enough. So you take a heating pad basically, and you have your little dome, and uh, you can buy these for like, it's a little thin piece of plastic. And you have to grow basil in the dark. So I put something else, like a cover on top, and make sure to mist it very frequently, or then the plants dry up and die, which happened to a few of them. Challenges and success. What I found most difficult, uh, growing strawberries. I didn't bring my strawberry plant because I didn't have any of them uh, actually producing fruit, but I've got awesome pictures to show you guys. And they were like the best strawberries I've ever had. Have any of you gotten the strawberries from maybe Kronings or somewhere? Uh, the Thimble Farm strawberries? Huh. It's grown? Yeah. yeah, so those are the exact same ones. Those guys gave me one of my plants first testing this before any of these were big enough. And uh, yeah, as you can see, my mint plant really took off. It was like the best one. I'll show you guys the roots. Wow. Yeah, so that's just the root bed right there, and it's really th like thick, thick roots, and then it starts to get a lot more thin down here. But uh, that's all sucking up nutrients and oxygen, which is very important for your plants. So um, what I found difficult about the growing strawberries was the nutrient solution. You had to be very precise and exact in order to actually bloom your flowers, or not the flowers, but your fruit. So to make them come to fruition, what you need to do is like <laughs> really hear it. Oh yeah, no, there's one of your words. Very nice. <laughs> uh, basically, treating it properly was the most important thing. And I was growing basil, mint, and strawberry in one system, so I really couldn't do that because I didn't want to mess with these. But um, every maybe week or so, I get like two or three strawberries. They're really, really good. Um, the success. The successful part of my project was uh, I managed my time efficiently and I learned massive amounts about hydroponics and growing water and of soil. So if any of you guys aren't really familiar, hydroponics is the absence of soil replaced by water. So you can treat it with organic compounds like um, fish poop, that's like the best thing to use. And uh, I don't know, anything else that you can think of that will really generate a, a lot of nitrogen, phosphorus, oxygen. So here are my results. This is my mid plant, maybe a week ago.
I trimmed it, so it's already getting bigger. But uh, I would have like a bush if I didn't go down there for a couple of days. I would see so much mint, and I just trim it, put it in a bag with wet paper towel, throw it in my fridge. And one of the benefits to hydroponics is if you let's say you grow a head of lettuce or even mint, it's more viable for a longer period of time opposed to something that's grown in the ground. So that's a really big benefit to hydroponics that I looked into, and I thought everybody could use that because how many times do you go into your uh, vegetable drawer and you see like the stuff you bought a week ago is wilted and dead? Can't you? Cloth. Ooh. So some more mint. That's just a reference, as you guys can see, my hand. Mm -hmm. There's a little strawberry. Looks pretty good on top of two of my systems. Ooh, the roots of the strawberry plant. There's my strawberry plant inside my hydroponic system. There's a little up close photo. As you can see in this one, right there. Oh no, that's not a strawberry, but sometimes these strawberries, like what would happen is they would be very, very green. I assume if you eat them, it would be like maybe sour because they just weren't producing the right way. So definitely next time I would learn how to do that a lot better and maybe devote like a whole hydroponic system to growing the strawberries. I wrote in my essay, which is on my website, how at Thimble Farm, they've never grown it in a deep root system, which is what I have here. It's highlighted on my website. I talked about the ebb and flow system, which is where you flush an area once a day so the roots get stuff and then it drains out slowly. The deep root system is where the roots are just suspended in water. You can lower the water so the roots are going to keep searching and searching and searching and it'll bring that root bed down. And the other one is a nutrient film solution where you just have a thin, thin layer of nutrients going in like a film of water where your plants will sit in neck cups, like mine shown here. And what happens is it just needs that little tiny bit and it's a constant flow due to gravity if you manage it properly, made out of PVC pipe or anything. It's all super cheap, which is like the best part. So I really hope other people would like want to do this. And I'm, I'm free to help anyone too, if they are interested in doing this. Basil. This is just one of my basil plants. It's really nice roots. So that was maybe a week ago. And this plant has already started to flower a lot more. And the roots have already got a lot bigger. So it's very, very quick. Ooh. As you can see, these are your growing media, which are used basically for support and housing. So instead of soil, those are kind of soak up water and nutrients a little bit, but they're not so important. When you have smaller net cups, you use them like the nutrient foam solution. You don't even need to have those because you just fit your little rock hole plug into that and then the roots will just go down and it'll fit perfectly. More roots. Up close. That's one of my smaller basil plants right here. So there's only like three or four leaves and a couple days later. It's actually two plants in here. These are a lot better. That's just what it looked like. I'll show you guys pictures of my nutrients, but there's your oxidator. There's some strawberry seeds I hope to plant. That's a rock wool plug. And just five gallon buckets, all you need. You can see uh, it's a little discolored because of the light I use. It, I use a UV LED light, so it's very effective and it's very cheap to use. The light was probably the most expensive part of my project. It was um, $20. So Flora Micro, Flora Grow, and Flora Bloom. Flora Micro is like the foundation of this three-part system, basically. And what that does is help just the plant start, basically. And when you administer the amount of nutrients, it differs on the size of the plants and like what type it is so far. So if you have a little seedling, you're not gonna jack up the nutrients or you harm it, you just kill it. But uh, the flora grow is to really help it like grow and vegetate until flora bloom. Uh, it wasn't really necessary for these little ones, but I, I guess it helped. But for my mint plants and my strawberry plants, Useful. I noticed that when I did change the amount of floral bloom I put in, it would differ in the effects of the strawberries. That's the growing media. That was like five bucks for a whole two pound box, I think. 
there's my light. I turned it off for you when we really got a good picture. And as you can see, this is just in my basement. It probably takes up maybe a two by three area. Probably like four cubic feet. Is that it for pictures? Yeah, that's all I have for pictures right now, but if you guys want me to go back to any photos, I can show you guys something else, like some of the other ones. Anyone? Sam? Is there more of a, like, each nutrient from different types of nutrients, like which ones are found in more? Like, Excuse me? Nitrogen or phosphorus? Well, there's a lot of nitrogen in the beginning, and then there's phosphorus towards the end because it helps them bloom. So, it's really important to know which one you're using, because you could really mess up the system. And so you kind of you can't see here, but if you want to come up, you'd be able to see it looks kind of a little yellow around the edges, but that's due to some type of nutrient deficiency, which uh, I was just learning how to do that at the Farm. They were teaching me more about that because it's a little bit more advanced. But uh, for anyone that is interested in doing that, there's tons of research out there, and I have links on my website that uh, talk about all that. So I was using those, and uh, it was pretty helpful. So I'm kind of happy with my project, and if any of you guys have any questions, I'll go through the answer. Yes? Um, why in the basement, not like a greenhouse? Uh, my basement was warm enough, and I started <coughs> in March, I believe, so I don't have a greenhouse. But I'd like to do it on my roof this summer, one of these deep root systems, because they're so easy to set up, and I can use natural sunlight and stuff. So I'll definitely put my case up there, and like I can take a picture every day to see, like, what it looks like. And I'll like, be posting more on my website and stuff. I don't think I'm done with this project. Would it's natural sunlight be any superior as far as, I don't know, flavor or nutrients of the, the product? I have no idea, but I'm sure I'll find out. Mm -hmm. I mean, the LED lights are pretty efficient because they just give all of that, like the light that you don't really see, it's getting all of that. Mm -hmm. And it just helps the plant photosynthesize really well. And it's going to stay there on all day. So it's like, it's really, really helpful. Oh, I thought flowers, in order to bloom, had to have some sort of pollinization going on. Right. Uh, some, um, some. Some flowers, yeah. Oh, okay. They oh. Do not, yeah. You'd see some flowers actually start to bloom. Like, they'd have the yellow on the edges on the strawberries and stuff. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't always very successful with the strawberries. That's what I definitely want to do next time. You mentioned you had a video. Is, is that on your website? No, I can pull that up right now. You adjust the light, the height of your light. No, I never really used it. I had it in one setting. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna need a hair dryer, the desired size neck cup, a five gallon bucket with a knife and a serrated blade, and the top to a five gallon. Bucket. Step two, take a sharpie in your neck cup, trace the bum. You're gonna to wanna to leave a little extra space so you'll fit the neck cup at the end. Take your hair dry and your serrated knife and you're gonna heat this up and cut out your hole. Step two. I already said that. Cut it out. <laughs> it works a lot better once it's heated up. I learned that. I've grabbed like three of these and I put it in. Repeat this process two more times. Now that you have your three uh, holes cut out, it's time to fill this baby up with five gallons of water. Then we're going to treat it with our hydroponics nutrients. K5. Here we are. With the holes cut out of our top and the five gallons we put into our bucket, we're now ready to treat it with Flora Micro, part of the three-part system. So we are going to do one teaspoon per gallon. Pretty simple measurement. We got five gallons in there, so we're going to take five teaspoons. So far, good. One teaspoon. This is probably the most tedious aspect of this whole thing. A little messy too, so. Come on. <laughs> 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 
head of lettuce in 21 days? So in horticulture, I know they can grow a head of lettuce in 21 days. So I think if I spend a little bit of time there, uh, I'd learn how to do that with lettuce. And I think that's the next thing I want to do. So my dad owns a restaurant, my family at the San Mar and Grill. And I think it'd be interesting to put a couple of these in there, just a little light. People could walk up to you, they can pluck a mint leaf off, throw it in their mouth, or anything. Yeah. Fun stuff. I know, I really, I think cool. getting good at doing the strawberries would be really cool, because strawberries are one of my favorite foods. Another fresh. No. Not even. But like, the first time I went down there and I saw one of the actual strawberries, it was big and shiny and glossy, it almost looked fake. And I put it in my mom's face and she I was like, look at this. And she's like, what is that? I said, oh, it's a strawberry. I was like, I grew that in the basement. Every time I came upstairs with like a bag of produce, my dad was like, you grew that? I was like, yeah, I grew that. Like, no way. <laughs> yeah. I was like, like, yeah. Well, uh, can yes. you speak a little more to your um, experience at Thimble Farm and how that was uh, helpful. helpful and maybe, you know, what you noticed about, uh, about their yeah. use of hydroponics that was particularly interesting to you? I think the most interesting thing is how productive in, uh, yeah, how productive they are there. They produce way more stuff than they actually need. Like, Let's say this room was just a table, and they had every six inches they had a neck cup with, let's say, a head of lettuce inside of it. They could produce, let's say, like 500 plants in this area, maybe a thousand plants. They can then, if they use the thin nutrient, the nutrient film solution, which uses gravity and PVC pipes, they can basically turn this on its side and have it. They can have like six of those, just rows, and that's what they have there. So I was hanging around there and like looking at that, and it was really cool to watch like everything grow and stuff. Definitely like the strawberries because they always let me take one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the was cool. You mean turning it on its side, so, it grows. So the I'm lettuce kind of like, comes like. No, no, no. Out? So I'm saying like you have to think about it like that. They're taking 500 plants, mm -hmm. and now they're gonna put it in a rows and columns because they have PVC pipes that are gonna run like this, and they're using gravity to just pull the water down, and that's all they need. And they can take an area that would normally take up like 400 square feet, or however big this is, I don't know, 350 square feet, and they can just take that and they can use it use vertically. And then it just grows up, and they're just growing next to each other. So uh, I was thinking about doing that in my basement, because you could grow like a lot more stuff. Have you ever looked into, because I know they're doing this, like, well, just to feed, because yeah, exactly. the proper use of, or fishing use of space. Um, but I know, like, in cities and urban, you know, Yeah, fire. well, yeah. I mean, you really, can have, yeah. instead of, like, a town, like, in New York City, in the mm -hmm. boroughs, you have, let's say, like, a, gar a huge garden. All you would need is the side of a building with some floodlights or something uh -huh. going down on it, and that would create a massive amount of food. And everyone could have, like, their own five plants, and every day they go up to them, grab five plants or whatever, put them back the next day. Do they do that anywhere? Uh, I didn't look into it, but I think it would be interesting to find out. It sounds like you came up with the idea. Yeah, maybe I came up with the idea. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm going to business school next year, so I think a really cool business venture would be my own hydroponics company that kind of taught people how to do this. And that was mainly the focus of my project, was to learn how to do it myself so other people could do it. Because I knew I'd be able to do it, I just, I got all this time and I put so much energy into it that it really, like, worked, yes. Pretty happy with the results too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you.